Hello again, I'm Paul Beckwith. So this is a part two um, video. Okay, so I'm going to continue talking about how CO2 detectors used indoors in public spaces can determine the amount of CO2 in the indoor space. And the closer the number is to the external atmospheric uh, level of CO2, which is hitting almost 420 parts per million. So the closer the indoor number is to that, the better the room is ventilated. And if you're in an indoor space and the CO2 level is, is uh, under a threshold, whether it be 600 or 700 or 800 parts per million inside, then, and you're wearing masks, then you know that that space is relatively risk-free from the coronavirus. Whenever you talk or cough or, sme or sneeze or you know, open your mouth, yell is worse, sing is worse. Whenever you talk, there's these, these uh, water vapor comes out of your mouth, water droplets come out of your mouth. And if you're infected, the coronavirus comes out and those virus particles are trapped in the aerosols and in the water droplets of all different sizes. And in the winter, the air is very dry, so that water will evaporate fairly quickly from those droplets, leaving just the virus particles, which are very tiny, to float around the room for hours on end in an unvented space. So you, you need to have windows open, you need to have good ventilation indoors, and that way there's, the air is exchanging. So if you're in an indoor space, and the CO2 level is roughly double what it is outside, so if it's about 800 odd parts per million, then you can calculate that the amount of air, that the air that you're breathing in that space, about 1% of it has, has been exhaled from other people. And of course, that's very problematic and concerning in a, in a pandemic, and that's with 800 parts per million inside. You know, if everybody's wearing masks, you can lower the risk, but you're, you're rebreathing air that other people have breathed out. And you can determine you know, how much, it, how much of, of that is going on just by monitoring the, the CO2 level. So I showed a lot of different stuff in, in the last video, but I'm going to get specifically into... Um, this was a very interesting um, article. They, used, uh, they had an indoor concert in Japan and they had a big huge screen showing the CO2 level. So this is a very good level. Outside it's about 420. Inside this concert it was 640. So the, there's good ventilation in this room. There's good airflow and the risk of getting the coronavirus um, is, uh, would be much lower than if this number is say 800 or 1000 or 1500. So imagine if we had CO2 detectors illuminating, lighting up on a wall in a place, you, you know it's a, it's, it's a, you, you can assess with a number the relative safety of that space. Um, as I said in the last video, I'm convinced that we can destroy the virus and reopen economies and get back to a normal basis for this virus and for all viruses in the future by having these simple metrics in indoor public spaces. Okay, another sort of good side effect is that people will become more aware of what the CO2 level is and how it's going up as it relates to climate change. Now, this is the article that just came out um, a couple of days ago by Chris Mooney. There, there's a major trend going on. People are turning to carbon dioxide monitoring devices to help assess ventilation quality. You can find out how much of other people's exhaled breaths that you're breathing in. Okay, so this is a restaurant. There were five wall length windows and Washington state regulator said that it wasn't outdoor dining, so it had to close because of heightened coronavirus restrictions. Okay, so the owner went on to Facebook to protest. He gave a video tour. He showed these garage door size windows. He says, I can just open them. He got a CO2 detector. The video was viewed many times and the state actually uh, changed their laws and classified this as an outdoor space. 
Okay, this restaurant could count as an open air dining space, even though there were four walls, because they actively, they opened large windows or doors and they measured the levels of CO2. Okay, so the restaurant's open again. Okay, so this can save businesses. Okay, um, so this, in this restaurant with the CO2 monitor, they try to keep it under 450 parts per million, which is slightly higher than outside per state policy. Okay, um, it's part of a new wave as scientists, citizens, and businesses, including gyms, restaurants, and bars, try to quantify the airborne coronavirus risk in hopes of staying open. Sales of handheld CO2 monitors have boomed. There's one popular model, the $250 Aeronet, uh, sold out, okay, quickly. It's made in Latvia and they've ramped up production. Exponential growth in sales. Okay, there's a whole bunch of people posting uh, so-called coronavirus activists or citizen scientists. They're tweeting out their readings in different locations using the hashtag, hashtag COVID CO2. Okay, um, a group of CO2 gorillas in Australia, they document measurements in grocery stores, doctor's offices and businesses, often displaying very high levels of CO2. And of course, they used the CO2 level on the massive screen in, con in a rock concert in Japan recently. Okay, so this is an example. Um, CO2 in a pharmacy was over 950. Whoops. So all they did is they got the manager to switch off a fan at the front door that was blowing air back in and had the back door open, created a cross draft and CO2 dropped by, uh, by a factor of two. Much, much more safe environment, much less risk of transmission of the coronavirus in this environment as opposed to in this environment. Okay, and there's lots of other, other stuff here. Um, I think this should be treated as seriously as, um, as, as our vaccine development. Okay, uh, you know, how, this, is, this, is, uh, this is hugely important, okay? Okay, so the impetus again for measuring CO2. Uh, an increasingly powerful body of evidence suggests that the coronavirus is airborne. It can travel distances well beyond six feet in tiny aerosols released when infected people talk, shout, sing, or just breathe. There's currently no sensor that can monitor in real time whether these infectious aerosols are floating around us when we're indoors, but carbon dioxide can, in some ways, act as a proxy. People exhale it when they breathe, and the gas builds up in indoor spaces that aren't well ventilated, reaching concentrations far above the baseline level of outside air. Okay, I'm talking about it in the virus context, but it's also very important in general health you know, if you're in a car and the windows are all closed and it feels really stuffy, you can start getting headaches and start yawning and your cognition and response time all decrease. There's studies showing that and I've discussed them in previous videos on my YouTube channel many years ago. Okay, so, you know, if you're in a classroom or a boardroom and there's lots of people and the doors are closed and it's stuffy, everybody starts yawning after about 30, 40 minutes an hour and uh, start sleeping and just, uh, you know, the very unproductive meetings. And it's, it's um, you know, back, it, it, it's, it's completely avoidable. You just, you monitor the level and you ensure that the ventilation is sufficient to, um, you know, allow your business like gyms to open up. You know, here's a sensor in this restaurant. I mean, there's a wide open door here. This looks like similar to the, the garage door in, in Kettleman's Bagel that I was talking about in the last video that I went in. And uh, so this is gonna be measuring near uh, the external level of CO2 inside. Okay, um, it's, it's this, I can't overemphasize how important this is. You know, if to scientifically accurately measure CO2, sophisticated lab equipment is used, can cost thousands of dollars. But these handheld or mountable sensors costing about a hundred bucks and up, they become very popular. So they use a technology called non-dispersive infrared sensing. 
Um, and uh, yeah, basically you just, uh, it gives you a really good idea um, as to what you're facing, you know, trans. So here's uh, the rebreathe fraction is the percentage of the air that you breathe in that others in the same indoor space recently breathed out. For instance, uh, this guy calculated that when the indoor concentration of carbon dioxide reaches 800 parts per million, then each time you breathe in, 1% of the air you inhale has come from the exhalations of others. During a pandemic, that's an alarming thought. Do you remember birthday parties before the pandemic? You actually blew candles out on a cake. Can you imagine? Do we? I don't know. Will we go back to that? I mean, the normal flu has been basically crushed, right, with all the masks wearing and stuff. It's just we got to lick the coronavirus now. Carbon dioxide concentrations of 1,000, 2,000, or even 4,000 can be found in poorly ventilated indoor spaces. People simply aren't aware how much the gas is built up. Many teachers are reporting that they have 2,000, 5,000 you know, parts per million. And you just use sensors and you get that number down to less than 600 and you know that you're way, way safer. Okay, so here's a video you can use. I've got one of these uh, forward looking infrared cameras. So you're seeing heat and uh, they also detect infrared. So you're seeing this, the, the CO2. So here two people are talking, not yelling at each other. They're talking fairly close together. And you can see the vapor here, the CO2 coming out, and then it disperses and spreads. Okay. Um, now, these devices, you need to get, if you get a device, you need to figure out how it works, like, and check, like, the calibration, uh, you know, what's the accuracy of it, because they can drift in time. Um, but you know, you know what it is outside, so that's a benchmark. You know, you measure it outside, away from anything, not near a highway, you know, uh, not in a forest, because that'll lower it, but just out in an open space, and it should be about 420, okay? But it's a relative difference that's important, okay? Um, you know, so 400 is, 420 is exter <coughs> external, 600 would be great. You know, if it's 700 to, if it's over 1,000, it's terrible. If it's 700 to 1,000, it's a bit of a gray area. Are you safe in a space? A space with 25 people in it, a CO2 measurement of 700 parts per million, right? Obviously, that's far better ventilated than one with three people in it at 700 parts per million. Okay, um, you know, there's only three people. So the odds of some one of those three having it is much less than in a space with 25 people, okay? Um, also, you know, there's these portable HEPA air filters um, and other things that can be used. Um, so anyway, um, CO2 measurement. So it's a perfect risk, a risk proxy for COVID. Here we go again. The baseline principle is hard to dispute. I'm harping on this because it's vital information. It's so important. If carbon dioxide levels are very low in a business or office or grocery store or wherever, then your coronavirus transmission risk is probably also low, at least from people who aren't very close to you. The risk will be lower still if people are also masked and wearing their mask properly. So start demanding that businesses install these monitors and uh, you know, have them displayed so that all customers can see them. Uh, but in the meantime, um, you know, I highly recommend getting your own portable device and make sure you let me know what type you get and how it works. And please consider donating to my website, paulbeckwith.net, and I'll start buying these monitors and testing and comparing uh, different types. Okay, so. Again, vital information to, um, to uh, beat the coronavirus and allow businesses to reopen. Okay, thank you very much for listening. And, uh, you know, I'll, uh, like I said, I have a very old CO2 detector. It has to be plugged in, but I'll get a portable one very soon and let you know how it works. Okay, thanks for listening. Bye for now.